Hey everyone, this is Riven Blade with a review of AEW Dark Elevation episode 18 for July 12th, 2021. So we are out of Daly's Place, we are in Miami, and we're still at an almost two hour runtime. Selfishly, I'm not too thrilled about that, but I know it's good for the wrestlers and will pay dividends for the company down the line. And this is an optional YouTube show, and you know what? This was a good episode of this YouTube show. It had several matches that are worth your time, especially if you're a fan of these wrestlers. So let's jump right into it with Thunder Rosa taking on Dream Girl Ellie. Uh, these, this was a neat little match. Rosa had some really amped up energy into this one. She's starting off these darks and elevations lately a lot. And uh, this is actually the most that I think Rosa has given to an opponent in the last few weeks. Uh, Ellie looked pretty competent herself. Uh, Rosa got to show off her submission game. She ended the match with the Peruvian necktie, which was called by commentary now the Peruvian Calavera choke. So this is just another W for Rosa. Uh, the announced team mentioned that she's gunning for Brit, and she looked like she had an extra spring in her step in this match. She is a star. She is someone who can carry this division, and she is definitely the one who should take the belt off Brit eventually. Uh, so yeah, just a good showcase match for Rosa. If you like Rosa, you'll like this because she looked great. Uh, next up, we had this little promo segment for Elite General Manager, the iOS game, and it's coming out on July 15th, which is pretty soon. I played the beta for this. It was pretty fun. It's not really a deep sim game, more of something that like you can play for five or 10 minutes at a time uh, when you're kind of you know in line waiting for something. Um, but it's still, the art is amazing. Uh, and I'm looking forward to checking out the final version, especially to see how the online play works. So yeah, July 15th uh, on iOS and Android, AEW Elite General Manager. And yeah, check it out. All right, next up, Matt Hardy versus Fuego Del Sol. Uh, so Hardy calls Fuego a loser, and uh, he's an underdog who's fighting for a contract. So I guess that's a story that's now being told in the body of the show. Honestly, like last week, I thought a lot of these characters, a lot of these wrestlers, had seen their last matches in AEW, at least for a while. Uh, but it looks like, no, that uh, Tony Khan and AEW are maybe listening to the fans, or maybe see something in these talents themselves. Fuego in particular, he's a big fan favorite. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, anyway, Hardy says that he's going to beat Fuego, uh, he's going to beat his opponent tomorrow, and he's going to beat Christian on Dynamite. And you know what? Matt Hardy sounded and looked more convincing this week. I thought this was a good match for him. Uh, Fuego, he was a little bit awkward during one point in particular. He had this kind of like top rope takedown, but the crowd is behind him. Uh, anyway, Matt Hardy wins it with a twist of fate, followed by the leech. And uh, again, he looked pretty good in here. Uh, he's out there with the Hardy family office. He is a scumbag character. And uh, I enjoyed him tonight. You know what? So I'm looking forward to seeing what him and Christian can do together. Uh, that's kind of a lie. But, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for them to have the best version of the match that Christian and Matt Hardy can have in 2021. And uh, you know what? No, got to be honest, though. This match with Fuego did um, leave me optimistic for Matt Hardy's performance against Christian. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, next up, Riho versus Amber Nova. So again, Riho has just got infectious energy and this was a pretty strong performance from her minus like a super awkward ending, uh, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, this was also a decent outing for Nova. She had this like innovative reverse arm bar and like a very high bridging suplex pin combo. Uh, and there was again, the thing that really messed up this match and messed up the flow and kind of the only thing that I'll remember about this match is there was a visible three count that the ref called a two on when Riho was doing this kind of pinning combination with the bridge. And uh, you know what? This is when the ref needs to call an audible. It was obviously a three. The crowd saw that it was a three. Uh, Riho was going to win this match anyway, uh, so they should have just probably called it a three. I'm wondering what happened. Did Amber Nova like think this was the finish? Did she forget it was the finish? Um, did she only hear a two in her head with the ref slapping his arms down on the mat? I'd be curious to hear the backstory on this one and what actually happened because it was an obvious three count. Anyway, um, the Riho, she ended up, you know, needing to go to the top rope. She hit the double stomp and Nova sold that in an awkward way as well. I don't know if Riho like really stomped her in the stomach or something, but after she did the double stomp, uh, Nova kind of like got up into a sitting position and kind of like held her stomach. 
Uh, normally you want to kind of stay down for that move so that Riho can just get the pin. Anyway, before that ending, it, it was a pretty decent match and Riho is just, you know what, uh, the Riho rule of having Riho on TV or YouTube somewhere within like every two weeks is being followed right now and, and I'm happy for it. And I want to see her on Dynamite sometime soon because yeah, she looks good. She always looks great. All right. Uh, next up, we got this quick little promo from Lee and Dustin. You know, Dustin keeps asking Lee, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Lee says it's the biggest opportunity of his life to face Jungle Boy on Elevation for tonight. So this is just a uh, hype for the match. Good stuff. It keeps Lee getting it in reps in front of the camera, which he needs uh, more so than reps in the ring at this point, because the guy is he's kind of a stud. I got to be honest, like from an in-ring perspective. So, yeah, just a uh, hype for their match later. Uh, Powerhouse Hobbs versus Baron Black. Uh, this is just over super quickly. <laughs> uh, Black tried some chops at one point and uh, then just, you know, he gets put off the ropes and spine busted straight down into the mat. Hobbs just drills him, doesn't waste any time messing around, and he looks beefy in victory. So yeah, Hobbs taking out Baron Black. I was expecting a bit of a longer match. Got to be honest with you. Black's looked good. Thought we could maybe see that his backstabber landed on Hobbs. But you know what? Probably smarter to keep Hobbs looking strong right now anyway. Uh, next up, Kylan King taking on the returning Yuka Sakazaki. I'm so happy to see Yuka back in AEW. And you know what? Unfortunately, um, there were times in this match, there were a couple of moments, maybe three or four moments, uh, that kind of messed up the flow of this match. So... The beginning was fine. Uh, the size contrast between the two of them, uh, you know, made for an interesting matchup. And in the beginning, you could see that Yuka, there was this one time when she was bouncing off the ropes. I, I think she kind of like misjudged how far or close the ropes were, probably a difference in ring size from Japan to the US and AEW. And um, it ended up being kind of a mixed bag after that. So there were issues with the ropes. Uh, she took a shoulder block that seemed to rattle her. Uh, she missed a top rope dive onto the apron um, and was then dropped onto the corner of the apron by King, which looked really brutal. Got to be honest with you. And the ref checked on her, luckily. Um, and you know what? She won with the Magical Girl Splash. And, but because of those moments where she kind of like missed that top rope jump, uh, she kind of didn't really bounce off the ropes properly a couple times. Um, it was not the best performance from Yuka. Um, and Kylan too. She was she was decent. She played her role okay. But I guess I was expecting more. Uh, maybe she just needs to shake the cobwebs off. She just got into the States, I think, like two days before this match happened or something. So I'm expecting much better things from her and Penelope Ford on Dynamite this week. Because uh, you know what? Yuka can do it. I've seen her in big matches uh, she delivers, and I think she's definitely going to deliver on Wednesday. So, yeah, happy to see her on Dynamite this week. Uh, there she is. She is just fantastic. Uh, next up, the acclaimed with the MVPs of Dark and Elevation. That's right, the Chaos Project, taking on the Gun Club and the Varsity Blondes with Julia Hart. So, of course, you got Caster doing his rap, and look at this this album cover material right here. Luther, Serpentico, Anthony Bowen staring at the screen. Uh, really great stuff. Uh, Caster, you know, in his rap says that uh, acclaimed are more over than the Varsity Blondes. He disses the Miami Heat, says they're going to get swept. Uh, Luther, there is a fun commentary moment. We have arrived, people, okay? So uh, I think it's Tony Schiavone. He says, Luther, using Serpentico, this is classic Chaos Project offense here. We did it, guys. We, we've made it to the point where the Chaos Project have classic offense. They've been around long enough. They are just solidified all time in AEW. Uh, and you'll love to see it, I gotta say. <laughs> uh, these guys really are the MVPs of this show for me. So yeah, this was actually a super fun match. My only um, criticism of it is that I wish it had gone a little longer. Uh, everyone got their chance to shine. Like Luther screeched, Pillman showed great fire. Uh, Griff hit like a brutal looking discus form on the outside at one point. It was just a really satisfying house show style match with everyone getting their stuff in and playing to the crowd. And uh, again, just Chaos Project, really great stuff. Anyway, this one ends with uh, Brian Pillman Jr. hitting his uh, springboard clothesline off the top rope and going right into the pin on Luther. Look at Luther, what a good sport. What a, what a good guy he is taking the pin there. Anyway, uh, yeah, fun little match. So in the post-match, the acclaimed say that they want shots at the tag titles and they say that the blondes are in their way. 
because the uh, Varsity Blondes, I guess, are ranked number two, and the Acclaimed are ranked number three, and they tell them, you know, to get back in the ring, or they can go to the back with Julia Hart and perform in Eiffel Tower, and I'm not going to look up what that means. You can do it in your own time, too. Uh, so anyway, the Blondes go to the back. They did have uh, the Acclaimed. They had a match with the Young Bucks back on December 23rd, 2020 for the tag titles, and honestly, I wasn't that impressed with them in that match, but you know what? It's been about seven months, and I, even though I feel there are fresher teams to put up against the Bucks, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing the Acclaimed take on this new version of the Bucks, and especially seeing the Acclaimed, you know, having seven months now of confidence built up in their act. Uh, I think that could be pretty cool. Uh, and again, AEW rarely does, like, rematches like this, so uh, I wouldn't mind it in this case. Uh, next up, we got... Allen Angels 5 taking on Brian Cage, and this is just a speed versus brute force match, a bit of a sprint. Uh, Angels hits This Is Gonna Suck, uh, which is a great move name, like he slams into the back of his opponent as they're on their knees with their body hanging over the second rope, kind of like a 619 setup. Um, anyway, there's some good commentary from Paul White in this match too, uh, because you know he obviously sees the size disadvantage between these two guys. He says he wishes he could lend Alan Angels 50 pounds, maybe 150. And uh, Cage is just really impressive in this match. Like he throws Angels back into the ring at one point from the outside, just tosses him over his shoulders. Uh, and the final three moves, there's a power bomb followed by a power bomb onto his knee and a drill claw for the win. So uh, just Brian Cage looking strong going into his match against Ricky Starks. And anything involving Team Taz, you know, we had Hobbs earlier in the show. We got Cage going here. Uh, that picture of Hook on Instagram this week, he looks like super built. God, he's got a great look. Um, some He looks like he belongs like in, um, uh, what is that series? The King of Fighters series or something. It reminds me of one of the characters from there. So yeah, or Final Fight maybe. Um, so yeah, I'm looking, really looking forward to Brian Cage taking on Ricky Starks uh, on Dynamite this Wednesday. Yeah, that's going to be great. And that one is for the FTW belt. So that should be interesting. Uh, next up, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus in the back. Uh, they wonder if they should wait for Christian before, you know, saying their promo. Uh, Jungle Boy says he's not a promo guy. I guess that's just kind of a shot at the internet, which is fine. Good for you, Jungle Boy. Stick it to us. Uh, he talks about getting 50 wins, says he's looking for the next record to break, and he kind of does the Christian looking into the, the, the distance gesture. And this is all kind of a slow burn, I think, for the eventual Jungle Boy and Christian match, which we'll probably get at some point this year. Uh, maybe even at All Out, who knows? Or are they going to save it for uh, a Dynamite show or maybe as long as Full Gear? Uh, we'll see. So far, this relationship is nice between Jungle Boy and Uncle Christian. And uh, yeah, just hyping up his match later on too, uh, taking on Lee Johnson, of course. Next up, Layla Hirsch and Kelsey Heather. So uh, this is just a dominant performance from Hirsch. I, I love her. Uh, Heather was just there to shriek and to look in distress for a minute and she did that well. So that's that's great for her. Uh, White, you know, on commentary, he, he had a pretty decent night. There were just a couple times that I wasn't a fan of his commentary. But overall, he's he talked about Layla Hirsch and said, you know, she is a shooter. She's even got shooter boots on. So uh, that insider wrestling lingo making its way into my YouTube shows. And I'm okay with it. So yeah, uh, this match just ends with Layla Hirsch hitting a textbook German a knee to the face, followed by the cross arm breaker. She looks good in this match. You know, she's now booked more and more like a face. Uh, I mean, I think she's always been a face, but there was that point period where I wasn't really quite sure because she was, you know, using like kind of heel-like facial mannerisms. Um, and with her being booked as a face now, I think my hopes of her eventually joining Team Taz have been temporarily dashed. But I do want to see her in a story. I want to hear her talk. I need to see her on Dynamite, you know, having these types of matches. Maybe not these types where it's like really brief, <laughs> but uh, I, I want to see Layla Hirsch on Dynamite in a prominent role. I know there's only so many spots, but she's so good. And this division is so stacked, honestly, at this point. Uh, like if you go through this episode, you had Layla Hirsch, you had uh, Thunder Rosa, you had Red Velvet, you had Hikaru Shida, you had Yuka Sakazaki, you had Riho. I mean, you had a hell of a women's roster on this show alone. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Layla Hirsch, just awesome, doing the work. Uh, next up, Scorpio Sky taking on Captain Sean Dean. 
with uh, Ethan Page on commentary. And I loved this match purely for Ethan Page living and dying with Scorpio Sky on commentary. Uh, these guys, like, he, so he's expressing an emoting concern and panicked worry when Sky's in trouble and, like, arrogant joy and laughter when Sky takes the advantage and eventually wins with the, uh, the TKO over there. So I just love seeing these two guys play off each other, even when one is in the ring and one is on commentary. They have good chemistry. They know how to put each other over. Um, you know, Paige talks about Sky being a freak athlete. He says he's explosive, dominant, handsome, smooth. And this was just uh, a really, you know, just a solid men of the year performance. So if you like this act, you're going to like this. And I think they're really coming together. They're starting to gel a lot more. And that coffin match, man, I, I'm I'm worried. I'm very worried. Uh, yeah, there's Paige just really happy for the victory. And Scorpio Sky, of course, posing after the victory. Uh, then we got the Jade and Mark Sterling promo for the day. So uh, Sterling says that in Jade's contract, you know, she is allowed to do anything in modeling and film and TV. Uh, says that they're off to Hollywood. He is dedicated to making Jade, you know, a multimedia star, the next great crossover star. Jade is still focused on wrestling, though. And uh, she takes the mic at one point and says, you all just sit at home and watch me kill it. So my my concern, not concern, I guess my question here is, is Jade taking a break from wrestling, like from showing up on AEW TV with this Hollywood thing? Or are we about to see some skits of her in Hollywood? Uh, I'm curious, and I'm really enjoying these skits. I think they're going, you know, they're they're doing something for Jade here. They're making her feel like a bigger deal with each of these, like, Jade brand contracts that she signs. And now she's off to Hollywood. They're going to talk to modeling agencies and all this stuff. So um, I'm curious to see her next big-time match or her next big-time feud. For now, just building up her persona is doing good for her. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what more they do after this. Uh, next up, Ty Conti taking on La Brava and uh, La Brava from Colombia, uh, making her debut in AEW. So if you know Ty Conti matches, you got all of that here. You got judo throws, a couple of awesome pump kicks, some forearms and the Ty KO for the victory. And this division, like I said, is utterly stacked. And, and I'm going to choose to be optimistic that they'll all get more shine once Rampage hits television. Yes, yes, that might seem very naive of me to say, but I need to believe it because of all the women I mentioned. Plus, I even forgot to mention Ty Conti, like in those names that I mentioned before. Um, and she's one of the biggest ones, honestly. She's a, she's a star. So um, I really hope AEW finds some room for all of these women uh, on Dynamite and on Rampage and that we get some stories, you know, just pick someone, pick two or three women or five or six women and develop a story around them and not just a, a random match, please. All right, Ty Conti celebrating the victory. Uh, oh, before we go on, yeah, some awkward commentary on this. Uh, Paul White talking about, oh, it's amazing that someone so pretty could uh, knock your teeth down your throat or something like that. Anyway, whatever. Next up, Lee Johnson taking on Jungle Boy. Uh, this was a good match. I love seeing Lee Johnson. He always has a ton of energy. He's got a presence about him. Um, I love him beating his chest after kipping up. Like, that's a really great babyface fire spot, you know, after he gets like a... He, he could do it during a hot tag or in a singles match as well when he goes on a bit of a run. Um, and I think he could be a pretty special part of AEW's future. The promo game is still, like, to be seen. Uh, we don't know enough about his character. I know he had that character piece um, several months ago, but it's been ages and they rarely talk about his background anymore. Um, he did this kind of one new spot in this that I haven't seen him do. He did like a long airplane spin spot. It was pretty impressive, honestly. It's something new to add to his arsenal. Uh, he also did a blue thunder bomb. And this one ends with like a pretty thrilling pinning combination exchange and Jungle Boy finally cinching in his pinning combo tight enough for the three. Uh, this was a good match. You know what? I'm going to give this one three potatoes and tell you guys to watch it. Uh, next up, Miro. Is that gray in his hair or is that just the lighting? Hmm, I don't know, Miro. Anyway, he talks about changing the TNT title like it changed him. So I'm wondering if we're going to get a redesign of the belt. Because if we are, that thing needs halos. That thing needs a golden-faced Miro. Uh, that thing maybe needs some angel's wings on the side. And it needs to say, maybe not TNT champion. If it does say TNT champion, somewhere on it, though, it needs to say God's 
favorite champion. Like, can you imagine Miro just lugging that belt around, saying God's favorite champion around his waist? Uh, I think that would be glorious and probably the next step for this amazing character that he's got going right now. Uh, next up, Red Velvet taking on Layla Gray. So uh, Red Velvet just looks great, as she has of late. The only bit of constructive criticism I'm going to give to uh, Red Velvet is she needs to figure out that apron split kick. Like the last two matches she's had, the way she hits it has looked a little bit awkward, and it needs just more impact, because the last two, it, it looks very um, weak. Like she just taps the opponent close to the head, kind of. Anyway, uh, Red Velvet, she's just got... Similar to Riho, like an infectious baby face energy. She's someone you just want to cheer. And uh, Layla Gray also, by the way, sporting some new gear uh, in this one. Um, so yeah, she looks she looks uh, she looked good here actually. And anyway, Lay uh, not Layla. Uh, there we go. Red Velvet. She wins this match with the chef's kiss kind of out of nowhere. A nice clean showing for her outside of that split kick on the outside. And I want to see her challenging Brit later this year because. She's got the fan support, uh, she definitely has the character, and she's just, I think, a really strong contrast for Brit. I think they would have a, a good match, especially with uh, Red Velvet's speed. That standing moonsault, though, <laughs> I always worry she's going to land on someone's face, because she always looks a little bit uncertain before she hits that one, too. So, uh, yeah, that apron split click. and uh, just, you know, just triple check maybe those, <laughs> those uh, standing moonsaults, too. Uh, otherwise, yeah, love Red Velvet, love what she's doing in AEW, and she wins. There we go. Next up, quick little Jora Joel promo. He has accepted Matt Hardy's offer. I'm happy to see Jora Joel back in AEW. I know he was here last week as well, which is great. Um, he says he accepts the offer because it's the route to his dreams, and not only his dreams, but the dreams of all the children of India. So this guy's putting a lot of pressure on himself, got to be honest all the kids in India, and um, he wants to be a role model for them. And uh, Matt Hardy is kind of his way, his gateway into achieving his dreams and becoming the man that he wants to be uh, for his country, basically. So yeah, kind of an interesting uh, character for him there. Uh, Private Party and Jora Joel taking on Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy, and once again, Wheeler, Utah. That is three straight weeks now that he's been on Dark or Elevation, and just announced he's got a match against Sammy Guevara at Fighter Fest Night 1. Clearly, they see something in the guy, which is wonderful because he's got skills. And uh, the only thing he needs to change is those tights. I, I don't like the, the green and white and just the lines kind of look a little cheap to me. Anyway, uh, this was a decent little match. And um, you know what? The, he, it's, it's hard looking. There's a hard looking landing here. <laughs> Uh, from Mark Quinn on Utah. Okay, so he did a, a tope con hero, I believe, and uh, he really got all of Utah. It looked like that probably smarted. It hurt. Uh, anyway, the announced team also kind of sold it like, oh, okay, he really got him there. Uh, there's some interesting... Uh, <laughs> Jora Joel gets in the ring with Orange Cassidy here. This was kind of funny. They did like 12 straight standing switches. So one guy, you know, grabs the back, then the other guy grabs the back, then the other grabs guy grabs the back, times 12. Uh, so that was pretty entertaining. Anyway, this all ends with uh, Jora Joel refusing to cheat as Mark Quinn is holding Utah. He doesn't want to hit him. He wants to do it by himself without help. And uh, Utah ends up rolling up Joel uh, while uh, Orange Cassidy takes out Quinn on the outside. And this is kind of coming full circle with the private party now trying to turn Joel to the dark side like Hardy did to them. So I wonder how many weeks we're going to get of Joel refusing to cheat before he finally cheats and uh, gets a victory. All right. And yeah, big news. I don't know. Like, is Utah going to be part of the best friends now? Or is he going to be like an interim replacement for, uh, for Trent? So, yeah, they give him a hug. Looks like he's maybe part of the team. He mentioned it on Twitter as well, that you got to give the people what they want. Uh, whatever. As long as this guy's in AEW, he's going to be on Dynamite tomorrow, which is fantastic. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of Wheeler, Utah. Just kind of hope he has, like, bigger league tights than the ones that he's wearing right now. Uh, next up, Hikaru Shida taking on Julia Hart. And this was a promising performance from Hart and a spirited performance from Shida as well. Again, it's great to see someone like Julia Hart right from the start of her young career 
only 19 years old, only gonna get better, and I think this is the best she's looked in AEW. In the last month, she's gotten to face Penelope Ford on Dynamite, now she's gotten to face the former AEW Women's Champion. It's just fantastic development opportunities for such a young talent, and it's encouraging to see a promotion be so proactive in putting people in positions where they can succeed and gain television experience. Anyway, uh, this match ends with Sheeta putting on a new submission from her as well, actually. Uh, there you see uh, Julia Hart's flexibility. And uh, this is called the Full Metal Muffler, kind of a modified stretch muffler. And it's nice to see her adding something new to her arsenal on top of her refreshed appearance. Feels like it's only a matter of time before we get a rematch between Sheeta and Britt. Uh, I don't need to see it for a while, though. And I still wish we got something from Sheeta on Dynamite. Uh, I've been enjoying her performances. This is probably the one I've enjoyed the most so far, um, but I want to see her on Dynamite or at least some kind of promo package explaining uh, where her head is at since losing the title to Britt Baker. So yeah, Sheeta looking great. A uh, really strong match and a good match from Julia Hart as well. Next, it's the main event and Helico taking on Darby Allen. And of course, uh, Darby Allen is just incapable of having a bad match at this point. I haven't seen a bad Darby Allen match in AEW since he started with the company. So this was very good, as you would expect from these two. Uh, and Helico targets Darby's knee early on. He kind of sells it for the duration of the match. There's some creative submission work from Angelico where he ends up lifting Darby and spinning him around a little bit while he has him in, a, in like a reverse figure four, the announce team called it. Anyway, these two guys are so crafty, so clever, and it's just been nice to see Angelico getting a single spotlight for the past few months. My first exposure to him was in Lucha Underground, and it's, again, just interesting to see the evolution of him going from this high-flying, you know, flippy guy to a uh, super submission specialist, Savant. So it's it's been pretty cool. Anyway, uh, Darby wins this, of course, with the coffin drop, as you knew he always would going into the coffin match. And uh, everything breaks down afterwards. So Sting comes in, uh, Christian comes in, because Matt Hardy's in there too. And eventually, uh, you got Sting and Darby staring down Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. And that's the uh, end of the wrestling part of the show. And uh, then we get a quick little promo from Sting. And um, he ends the show with a post-show promo putting over Miami, putting over AEW, putting over Darby. And Darby says it's going to be his pleasure um, to close the coffin on Ethan Page. So overall, this was a solid meat and potatoes wrestling show. Uh, only two things that you know were unfortunate were the, the ending of the Riho Amber Nova match and uh, a couple of spots, awkward moments in the Yuka Sakazaki Kylan King match. Um, otherwise, check out Jungle Boy versus Lee Johnson. The eight man tag was a lot of fun. Uh, Darby versus Angelico. And if you like Thunder Rosa, Brian Cage, Layla Hirsch, Red Velvet, uh, or Sheeta, or Ty Conti, uh, just check out their showcase matches as well. So I'm going to give this show three potatoes out of five with a side of gravy and a cold beverage. So yeah, pretty satisfying overall. And if you were satisfied with this review, give it a thumbs up, sub to my channel, turn on notifications, and keep the conversation going in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.